hello there. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't get over how goofy my sketch looks. But uh, anyways, um, it'll get better, I promise. At least marginally. Um, uh, but uh, as I was saying, this video is going to be sort of like a speed paint and a bit of a tutorial, I suppose. Um, I'm sort of going to structure it so most of it's just going to be like a speed paint and I'll go over... Um, I'll just do a voiceover like this throughout, and maybe I'll mention um, some things pertaining to um, why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, but then when we get to like the more sort of tutorial guide kind of aspects, I'll kind of take a break from that and I'll go more in depth. Um, into how to do certain things. So yeah, that is gonna be about it and I'll divide it into chapters so it's easier um, for people who really only want the tutorial um, or you know for those specific things I'll, I'll, I'll put them I guess in all caps so they're easy to find in the chapters. <laughs> um, but I here we go. <laughs> I'm sorry this looks so silly. <laughs> I don't know, this is just all, well, for a long time. I've always been the type of person to do my base sort of initial sketch, um, sort of planning it out very messily with a very big brush. Oh, and uh, yeah, don't do what I'm doing here and zoom in really close <laughs> because you'll see um, I messed up that eye and it's still kind of messed up and I will notice this later, but um, sometimes it's better to zoom out and see the bigger picture. Um, and I, I don't know, I can tell <laughs> that I'm, I was really nervous when I was recording this because I have not done a speed paint since I was, I don't know, a teenager in probably 2008, 2009, something like that. So this was a lot um, for me and um, I really sort of felt the pressure of knowing that I was being recorded and um, but anyways, I'm, I'm still happy that I did it. Um, what I was going to say here was, uh, what was it? Oh yeah, um, in terms of her expression, I don't know, I just had this, like, this vision in mind of this kind of, like, uh, subtle, slightly pursed, lopsided, kind of cheeky smile and this wide-eyed look that, uh, I sort of associate with this sort of mid- 2000s time. <laughs> um, I don't know, I did not take a lot of pictures of myself back then, um, so I'm kind of just going based on what I saw from other people. <laughs> um, I kind of wish I had, though. Um, you know, there's a lot of things, like even this I'm doing now, um, which it just means so much to me because there are so many things that uh, I was kind of hindered in doing um earlier in my life and now um I have uh my life circumstances are different and I have treatment and I'm just so excited to be able to live and to do things and I still have a lot of social anxiety I'm still uh, very afraid, but at the same time, I'm just, I'm so much more determined. I feel like uh, I was sort of just held back for a long time, and now I'm like, I'm out of that cage that I was in for really my entire life, and now maybe I still have a ball and shackle. I don't know, I'm making a weird analogy. <laughs> I'm sorry. But the point is, like, no matter what, I have just this small opportunity and I'm so grateful for it. I'm so grateful to have a voice. Um, and I just want to keep going as fast as I can for as far as I can. Um, because I, I, have this opportunity and I want to try things and I want to do things and 
I just want to have all these experiences and make something of my life and I'm sorry um I got off topic <laughs> but yeah I um when I'm coloring and shading like this I kind of um I'll block in the base or like I'll use a hard brush to block in the shading where I want it to go or sort of a general idea of that and then um I'm not even at that part yet <laughs> sorry um I have a lot of nervous energy but I hope that doesn't make the you know what no I'm gonna be confident I'm I apologize I'm I'm trying my best um, uh yeah I had some issues figuring out the perspective of that arm um, uh, it took me a few tries to get it right, <laughs> but I think it turned out okay in the end. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, uh, I'm kind of embarrassed watching this and seeing all the mistakes I made and had to correct, but at the same time, that's part of the process, and I don't want to be, let that shame keep me from doing the things I want to do because uh, everybody makes mistakes, everybody learns. I mean, you can kind of see me learning and figuring it out in real time, so that's something. Um, I'm just happy to be doing this. And another thing about it is, like, um, I just wanted to do a speed paint for a long time. Um, but I really couldn't because I have been untreated for my ADHD for years and I just did not have sort of the wherewithal to be able to sit down and just paint for long enough to be able to record it. And the fact that I can do that now, that I'm watching myself do that now, is just amazing and I'm so grateful for that. <laughs> truly, truly. Uh, I mean, when things go wrong or things don't work out the way I wanted to, I, I just try to remember little things like this, little signs of progress and small victories. And um, that's sometimes really just what matters the most, even if it's a matter of proving to yourself that, hey, look, I could change, or things could get better, or I can have, uh, you know, I'm sorry, I've lost my train of thought, but <laughs> anyways, um, what I, this is what I was saying before, I'll, like, I'll do the shading with a hard brush first, and I think that helps to kind of um, keep hard edges where they need to be and um, sort of figure out what needs to be softened and rounded out and what um, needs to stay more defined. Because um, when I first started digital painting, I thought, you know, I would just go in with a soft <laughs> brush and blend everything together. And I think in my mind, um, maybe a lot of other people have experienced this too in the beginning, where it's almost like rendering. <laughs> you discover um, this ability to do digital art without lines, and it's like just blending everything together um, uh, in your shading is almost a way to make it feel like you really know what you're doing <laughs> in terms of shading, even when you don't necessarily and you know i'm still learning i'm still um sometimes uh, have an issue figuring out light source and things like that or where um like right now i'm just trying to figure out <laughs> where it looks best to put those folds um in her sleeve um so hopefully it turned out okay in the end <laughs> but uh yeah, all of it is really just a learning process, and it's it's fun. It's I don't know. I think you should enjoy art, and 
I've been hard on myself for a really long time and I still kind of am um but at the same time I guess I've come to realize that the most important thing is doing things that I enjoy I mean I kind of started out like that but then as I got older and um, I had different experiences I kind of started skewing to my, my art to what I thought other people wanted it to be like if drawing a certain character was in a certain way was sort of the preferred um, look for them in fandom I would adhere to that even though I had my own ideas that I really wanted to explore and um, I'm just so glad I let go of that now I'm just I can feel free to, <laughs> to draw weird things again even if nobody else likes them um, you know it means so much more for somebody to like something that you made really a sort of a reflection of a piece of yourself rather than a piece of what you thought other people wanted and uh yeah i'm sorry i <laughs> stop saying uh yeah <laughs> um sorry i i just feel a lot better. I mean, sorry, uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to keep talking, um, which is hard for me because I've never really, well, I mean, I've done this before, sort of, with my speed builds and stuff, but during the time I was making those, I was still really struggling a lot, and now things are different. I don't know if it's perceivable on the outside, but um, now I, that I actually have a sort of treatment that benefits me, it's a lot easier for me to uh, articulate my thoughts, even though it's something I do struggle with a little bit. Um, it's a lot better, and I feel so much sort of pressure and responsibility now that I have sort of that I feel like I have a voice and that I can connect with people even if it's just on a small level um I feel like I need to be conscious of what I'm saying and the things I'm putting out into the world um like I even I don't mean like huge big world altering issues but even just little things like I'm really when I said I was concerned in my uh, video about the new era of Neopets I don't really like how I worded my concerns about the mobile issue because um, well I haven't really watched that video back <laughs> recently because I don't really care to <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, I'm afraid that from what I recall of what I said it might have come across as me sort of being disparaging or devaluing mobile users um, because I was talking about how I was worried about the future of the desktop site and I didn't want it to come across like that but that's the way it came out and that's how I ended up using my voice even if that wasn't my intention and I feel a sense of responsibility for that and I like I really need not only to think about what I say but um what my reasoning is behind it and why I feel the way I feel you know, and really try to consider um, how other people might be affected by things. And I know that's just like such a tiny thing, but 
Um, I know I'm probably overthinking this, and I'm not trying to have this sort of grandiose sense of entitlement. I don't think of myself as that important, but I think, I don't know, um, I've never really... I mean, I don't have a lot of subscribers or anything like that. I mean, a hundred and... what is it? Fifty-something? Um, no, 60, 63, I think. But anyways, that's a lot for me. That's, I went for years and years on YouTube without a single subscriber. So, um, it's a really big thing for me and I'm really grateful for it. But I also feel, you know, like I said, that sense of responsibility that I think everybody should have if they're using their voice and you know just take the time to consider how what you're saying affects the world as a whole and other people um but anyways sorry back to the topic of art <laughs> i do want to talk about this uh picture a bit um you know just doing this really reminded me of um, my, uh, sparkle dog era. <laughs> I, I'd never used to draw humans. I would draw, um, sparkle dogs. Um, and I really, I know people hate sparkle dogs, <laughs> but I just loved that sort of sense of creative freedom, that just unrestricted sense of just being able to draw this creature and really with, you know, limitless possibilities in terms of how you could decorate them, how many different colors you could use, um, their overall design, and I don't know, it was just such a fun creative outlet and I loved it, but other people <laughs> did it. Um, yeah. Oh, you know what? With Ashley specifically, I was thinking about the most, most, mostly, mostly <laughs> pictures. And I don't know. I, I think that's a recent thing. That's like since, um, the remake came out, not the original game. I believe if it were from the original game, or if it did sort of or originate in fandom from that time, I would be very surprised because uh, when I was doing this and I was thinking about my experience with sparkle dogs and also uh, drawing characters as animals was another thing I would do that people really didn't care for and would call me slurs <laughs> for, for just doing that. And that was like a normal thing to do in fandom back in the 2000s and even the early 2010s I would say um, and I feel like it's changed a lot um, it was just uh, quite a state of things but um, for the better and also for the worse in some ways I mean I guess everything is sort of always in flux, um, and I'm grateful that nowadays when, you know, people actually sort of get called out, um, at least a decent, uh, m amount of time, or, you know, I don't know if I would say the majority of the time, maybe the majority, uh, but anyways, uh, what I was saying, like, people do get called out for being just, uh, generally nasty and bullying, uh, on the internet, whereas back, like, 10, 15 years ago, that sort of troll culture was so prevalent and it was almost celebrated like those cheeky little gremlins another thing they would do to me was they would people took my uh, sparkle dog drawings and they would make um like really messy um sort of i guess satiric copies of them in ms paint and then uh 
like to mock me <laughs> and be like here's some fan art I drew for you and then me how I chose to cope with that at the time was to pretend that all my art was you know ironic and self-aware and pretend that I was in on the joke even though I was really just drawing these things because I actually enjoyed them and now that I think back on it I'm ashamed that I was sort of mock you know making a mockery of not only my own art but of that whole genre just um to deal with the fact that it was so hated for really no reason um just because i suppose it was a bit cringe <laughs> um but anyways i hope i mean cringe culture is dying i think it is i mean i think people are starting to realize that maybe um the real cringe is making fun of people who are just having fun and enjoying themselves and doing things that resonate with them. Oh yeah, and I'm sorry, I'm already working on <laughs> sort of re redesigning the um, her shirt. I made the wings a lot wider than they were in the original. Um, that was kind of a mistake, but <laughs> oh well. I really just sort of freehanded this because it was going to be kind of small and compressed on her shirt anyways, but um, yeah, it, it turned out slightly better than I expected, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, but, uh, at least this gives you a slight reprieve from my constant zooming in and out. That was another thing I wanted to apologize for. Um, I tended to zoom in really close, as you saw in the beginning, which led to, um, a mistake with the eye <laughs> and then another mistake that I had to correct later but um yeah I I don't know I you know really if uh sort of professionally I suppose it's better to be able to see the whole picture and to see what um you're doing and how um, it looks within the context of the whole, um, rather than just focusing on details, but that is a habit I have yet to break, at least for the most part. Um, and what I was going to say, oh my goodness, I just had a thought and it flew away from me. <laughs> um, hmm. sorry, I'm... I was on a roll, but now I'm just, um, I feel like it maybe was a mistake to just go at this video in one take, <laughs> but I wanted to try. Um, oh, oh my goodness, I, oh, I, what was I even talking about? I am so sorry. This is a terrible. <laughs> Oh, you know what? I did forget um, to do the eyes on the skull, so I ended up <laughs> going back and doing that later, but um, it's not really a big deal. And because I was working on two different later layers for this, um, the pink and the white were on separate layers, it was kind of hard to sort of adjust the perspective the way I wanted it, because you don't have all the transform controls while you're working with that but um i think i got it into a place eventually that looked kind of okay <laughs> um oh and this necklace i did also get a bit lazy on i did not make the beads even on both sides i just kind of um squished it <laughs> into the shape that it needed to be um but I don't think you can really notice unless you're really looking for it. And you probably will be now that I've just pointed it out. So, uh, oops, my bad. <laughs> um, but, uh, 
I'm okay. Uh, oh my goodness. I, I feel like I, I went into this having so much to say, but, um, I've kind of, I, I just had one moment where I lost my train of thought and now it's gone. Like there was so much I wanted to say about Resident Evil and, um, I don't know anymore. <laughs> I... Oh yeah, you know what? I was just thinking about this. Um, thinking about um, sort of art um, from this kind of era. I mean, people, like, I know a lot of people associate these um, sparkle, like, animated glitter gl graphics with blingy, but they've really been around since long before that. Like, for example, like, you will find a bunch of them, a bunch of sort of this style of edit if you go um, back and look at uh, Neopets beauty contest entries from 2003, 2004. Um, uh, yeah, it was really... Uh, you know, I think blingy and those sort of um, programs and websites made it more accessible to people. But oh my goodness, what was that other program's name? Was it um, Paint Studio? I want to say that's what it's called. I, I forget. <laughs> but I, I never had it personally, but um, it is something that I know a lot of people, I believe, used for these types of graphics. Oh, and now I am making the uh, checker pattern. So I'm just going to pause really quickly and give you sort of a quick tutorial on how to do that if that's something you are at all wondering about or interested in. Okay, hi. So here we are in Photoshop. I'm just going to make this a 500 by 500 size document. I think that's all I really need for what I'm doing here. Um, and one thing to note for making patterns is I think this is something, I don't think this is a thing in um, the most recent version of Photoshop, um, but in older versions of Photoshop, um, you will, you can only make 8-bit um, patterns in 8-bit color mode. Um, if you do 13, I mean, <laughs> 16 or 32, it just will not allow you to. So that is something to keep in mind. If you go to make a pattern and it's grayed out, that might be why. Um, so I am going to do it in 8-bit because I'm using Photoshop CS4. All right, so now um, for the checker pattern, it's quite simple, really. We're going to... Um, uh, go to snap to and make sure document bounds is uh, checked on so that it will snap to the edges um, and then we'll just do a new layer here and we are going to go to our shape tool and choose the rectangle and see in this custom um, shape little menu you can see you have um, a number of options um, so you can make it a square or we're going to go to fixed size and then um, do half since we're working in a square document we're going to do half the size of the document for the square which is going to be 250 by 250 pixels okay and then we can just have a click and that should give us our square, but oops, I've made a mistake. <laughs> what have I done? Oh, that was centimeters. Okay, that's why. So we're going to make sure it says PX at the end. Um, a little blooper, we can leave that in. So there we go. That's what we need. And now it's going to snap to the edges like that. And then we can hold Alt to make a copy of it, just click and drag it while you're holding Alt and go to the other corner, put it there, and we're going to make this transparent 
um, if you could make it white if you want, um, which I did for some reason <laughs> in the video, but um, now that we have our two squares in, paste, in place, we're going to go to edit, define pattern, and just save the pattern. Um, and there we go. And now if you want to see how this is going to work, okay, this is um, the thing here. So you can use the paint bucket tool, but if you just do that and choose to fill it with our pattern, here's our pattern here. Oops, um, I forgot to make a new layer. Goodness. Um, it's just going to give you that, and there's not really a lot you can do with it. So what we need to do is go to Layer, New Fill Layer, Layer, Pattern, and then we choose our pattern, and then we can go and make adjust the size of it and the scale to really make it however big or small that you want. So 20%, um, I think that looks good. So we'll just go OK. And that's that. But you see, um, when you have the pattern fill, it's just going to give you the, sort of this infinite um, scrolling pattern. So if you want to make any adjustments outside of that, you can, if you want, just right click click rasterize layer and now it's just going to be a regular layer that you can do whatever you want if you want to adjust the size slightly you can do that um, whatever suits you um, yeah and so obviously you can fill the background with whatever color you want oops I still had <laughs> the pattern selected but yeah there you go you can also color this, of course. You can, um, do however you want to do it is fine. You can put the transparency lock on and then just color over top of it like so, or you can fill it in however you want to do it. Um, but that is that, and I hope that helps. Um, sorry, it was a bit of a disorganized presentation, <laughs> but I'm doing this in real time. I'm sorry. Uh, alrighty, so uh, back to the speed paint. One thing um, with this, I really had sort of a rhyme and reason for all the sort of decorative elements I chose to put in this. Um, as you'll see in a second, this is the one time I really had to stop recording because I just got so nervous about knowing that I couldn't or that I was being watched, even though I wasn't really being watched, I was just recording. I could not sort of get into the whole creative process as I was a very messily trying to plan out where I wanted to place these different elements based on the idea I had in my head. So um, I kind of had to stop here and then cut and come back. Um, but anyways, um, uh, you'll see that in a minute. But as I was saying, I had sort of a plan here. Um, I really wanted to incorporate things um, that were sort of based on either elements from the game itself or from this particular outfit. Um, so um, one thing I really wanted was to have Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. The first thing I should say was the reason why I chose green for the background was because in Ashley's casual outfit, she has like this sort of this green and black checker studded belt. And I thought that was sort of a good basis to go on for the background because I was did have a checkered background in mind already. But then um, another thing I really wanted to have was to incorporate wings somehow because she has um, the necklace and um, there's sort of a lot of a bird theming in the game with um, their code names and everything. Um, so I, I wanted to incorporate those wings somehow, but I didn't really fit to just draw a bird on and at first I was actually going to do a skull with wings because she has the skull on her shirt but that didn't really speak to me 
Um, so I decided on the heart instead. I thought um, that fit more with sort of the theming of doves and freedom and hope. Um, <laughs> this sounds so goofy. All of this is going to sound just too clever by half, and it probably is, but this is just how I- <laughs> my brain works. This is how I sort of think of things. Like, I do put this kind of th thought into my artwork usually. Sometimes it's just kind of, um, I want to draw something weird, so I draw something weird, and I didn't put blue roses to symbolize, you know, like, uh, the unknown or whatever. I put them because I needed a blue flower and roses were the easiest to draw. <laughs> but, um, anyways, as I was saying, um, yeah, so the heart with the wings was one thing and, um, I, oh, I wanted to use every color of the rainbow in this, um, counting pink as red, sort of. Um, so I chose to put the orange in the heart because that's kind of like Ashley's color. <laughs> and I really um, just like the idea of sort of this chaos rainbow. Um, I, I just thought that was really fun. I wanted to use every color in this very messy, um, busy kind of way. Oh, that was another thing. That was, I'm um, sorry. I remember I got those paint splatter bl brushes that I wanted to use. But anyways, okay. Oh, for this bit. Um, okay. So I had this idea to give her a crown because I feel like I, I felt like I needed something else. And she's sort of like, in the role of the princess in the game. Like, she's the president's daughter. She's being rescued by Leon, who's kind of like the knight sent to get her. And I really, I don't know, I, I thought that was fitting, but also not, because I don't see Ashley as the type of person to, like, put a crown on herself and be like, oh, look at me, like, I see myself as a princess, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I decided I had a lot of deliberation on this bit, um, but then I thought, oh, what if I put it on top of a bow? Then it's less of, um, you know, just a crown and more of just, like, a fun accessory. But then um, I was thinking, what should the crown look like? And I was like, oh, like, the queen portrait from the dining room that's perfect i'll just see whatever she's wearing and um do a similar design for ashley so then when i went to look and i brightened the picture i was like oh she actually just has a bow in her hair which is perfect oh it all comes full circle <laughs> that was amazing um and then i also uh chose the stars because i felt like they sort of um encompass that sort of um, theme of hope and guidance between her and Leon and um, they're also very American. <laughs> um, and then I felt like all those sort of positive, um, hopeful sort of fairy tale elements sort of juxtaposed against the chains in the background um, was kind of fitting for resident. This is so dumb. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't call my own art dumb. I'm sorry, but I just mean I I realize how goofy this and overthought and kind of silly all of this is. So I apologize. <laughs> um, but anyways, what was I gonna say? Um, yeah, that's about it. Um, another thing I wanted- oh, right! I remember picking the- the pink for the paint because, um, it was kind of like, um, well, I sort of associate Ashley's color palette as being orange and green, and I kind of felt like, um, <laughs> the pink and green was almost like a more vibrant and playful um 
<laughs> version of that, well, whereas the orange with green, in terms of the outfit she wears in the game, um, like her real main outfit, canon outfit, is a bit more mature and subdued. Um, but yeah, sorry, I've rambled a lot, so now um, I will tell you how to do uh, the glitter effects in Photoshop, if that is something you were at all wondering about. Okay, hello, it is Tutorial Snowy back again, and I'm just gonna use this, um, the graphic I did for Ashley's shirt as an example um, for how to do the sparkles. Um, so, the first thing, I'm going to create a copy of my original two colored layers so I don't um, make a destructive edit, and then I'm just gonna put these in a group. Let's see, I'm just gonna name them actually. I usually don't name my layers because I'm very disorganized, but oops, um, it will make more sense for this, I think. You know what? I'm actually gonna make a copy of the whole group. Um, that makes more sense than to do it this way, but anyways, okay, so. We have our layers, and one really easy way to make uh, glitter is just to go into Filter, Noise, Add Noise, and then uh, just add noise. Um, you can adjust this until you have it at a place you think looks good. I mean, it'll just look like a bit of a mess if you put it all the way up. But um, depending on what you want to do, you know, you might ha want to have slightly more or less. I think this maybe looks okay. Um, so that is 3303. We'll just, yeah, we'll say 33. Um, and monochromatic or um, not, um, it looks a bit different. I actually find that some um, colors look nice with the color in it, but some like this just does not look the prettiest, so I'm gonna keep it, um, toggle the monochromatic option on. Um, all right, so there it is, that is gonna be our first frame, and then we're gonna do the same for this, but actually, you know what, I think I'm gonna do all the pink layers first, um, so, I'm going to make another copy of the original layer, so this is going to be our next frame, and it's really simple, all you want to do is um, add noise again, and this time we're just going to bump it either one up or one down from the number we originally chose, so it's at 33 approximately now, so we're going to go to 34, and you can see how that changed a little bit. Now, the reason we use a uniform or, and not Gaussian is because Gaussian doesn't always change, um, oops, as between these like very slight increments, so it's not going to give you that animated glitter effect. So, where I'll put it back to uniform, 34, there we go. And now the final copy, our third frame, we are going to do 35. Noise noise and you can really do however fl many frames you want a lot of the time even just two or three is fine for these kinds of glitter animations a lot of them actually only use two so um, there we go that is that and now I'm just gonna go back and do the same thing for the white layers filter noise add noise so I honestly I really like how the multicolored noise looks um, on the lighter colors. <laughs> That's just me. Again, you have a limit of 256 colors for making GIFs, so keep that in mind. But I'm gonna, um, let's see, play around with this, see what um, sort of intensity I like for this one. I think in the 30 range is probably good for this as well. Put that down to 30. I think that looks good. And then we're going to do the exact same thing for um, the other frames as we did for the pink layers. There we go. 
All right, so now that we have all our frames, so um, just so you can see, we're gonna, I'm gonna name these so it's more clear. We can say that's frame one. This will be frame two, oops, and frame three. All right, so we're gonna open our animation window and some, all right, so sometimes it'll come up looking like this. Um, that's not what we're gonna be using for this particular thing. So um, it, just click this little icon in the bottom to switch between the two, um, the timeline view and the frame view. We wanna see the frames right now. All right, so um, we're gonna make our first frame visible and then we're gonna click this button to add a new frame. Sorry, so when the new frame is open, we're on frame two right now, we're going to have our frame two group with our two frame two layers uh, visible. And we're gonna hide the frame one layer. And then again, for the third one, do the same thing. We're gonna be looking at frame three. So you can see when I switch between those three layers, we have a nice little sparkle effect. <laughs> so I think 0.2 seconds is what I used for this. You can sort of experiment um, with what you think best. There are these defaults, but if you go to other, you can input um, however many seconds you want. Um, and then this says once, we're gonna loop it. So change that to, so it first says forever, and then we'll just test how this looks. There we go. <laughs> so that's the gist of it. Um, and then if you want to add sort of more sparkle effects, I'm just going to do it um, in each frame folder. I'm just going to add a new layer um, and we'll just try to draw some little sparkles around because I did that in the actual document. I'm sorry, these aren't going to be super pretty because I'm just using my mouse. I don't have my tablet up here with me when I'm recording. Um, there we go. Put one there. Um, so that, and then we'll go to the next layer and we'll do the same thing, but we'll put them in slightly different positions. It might take a few tries to get everything exactly where you want it and how, you know, you think it looks good, but um, I'm just doing a really quick job of this so I can show you. And then we can do the same thing in frame three. And um, this is a bit of a messy job, but I'm doing it quickly again, just to show you how it works. And then you can have all kinds of fun trying it out for yourself and seeing what works for you. This is definitely gonna be a bit messy, but <laughs> here we go. Let's see how that looks. There we go. <laughs> it's a bit much. I remember in my original, when I was doing this, I originally had them in the pink, but then I took them out because I thought I didn't really like how it looked. I think it looked better just to have the sparkles and the white, but there is a general idea. So you can experiment a lot with that and just have fun with it. Um, and I'm just going to show you a couple other things that might be helpful. Um, we don't need the animation layer for this, but I'll show you how you can create your own sort of sparkle brush. Photoshop does actually have um, a sort of a sparkle brush. I think it's in, yes, it's under uh, assorted brushes. Um, and I mean, this, <laughs> um, so sorry, in order to make a brush, we're going to make it black on a white background. And then can put this here. I'm going to click a few times with this because it's a very sort of fine, wispy brush and I want it to show up. So um, we'll do that. And then I'm just going to go with a regular round brush and make a little dot in the corner, maybe a couple of them. Oops, maybe I'll make it. It's a bit big. Okay, we'll just do like that. Um, and again, this is something 
you can sort of experiment with you can oops if you want to give this like a sort of a glow you can do that um, I don't know there <laughs> that's something but um, let's see we have this now um, actually I think I might want to select that and move it a bit closer up into the corner um, deselect um, but yeah you just want a few little dots and then go to uh, define brush preset and you can name it whatever you want and then it has become a brush so um, let's just go I'm gonna hide all our all our little skulls to show you this so how this is gonna work we are going to um, uh, turn up the size jitter we're going to to put scattering to a hundred and then let's just see how that looks oops um, I want it to be white so we can actually see and that's it's gonna look something like that you can also um, turn up the spacing that's gonna help it um, be you know a little more spaced out so you know there's a really simple glitter brush that you can make and you s can sort of employ it in the same sort of animation styles you can explore with it <laughs> experiment with it you know you can also do something similar with the existing brushes you can turn on scattering and just have some fun with that um there you go um another thing um the last thing i wanted to show you is how to sort of uh, make a brush pattern um or not a brush pattern a glitter do glitter with patterns so it's quite simple again it's really the same principle that we used um, with the checkerboard but um, I just want to give you different options you know <laughs> so yeah I'm just gonna take a one pixel white brush um, this is a very small document it's only 50 by 50 pixels um, and again, you know, the size of the document you're working on will be affected by, um, or sort of, the smaller you make this, the more sort of uh, compact of a glitter effect it's going to be, the more uh, concentrated your glitter will be. But um, it really, you know, depends on the size of the document you're working on. So I'm really quickly going to make some little glitters. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, I, I might just speed this up. Um, again, I'm trying to do it quickly for you guys because I'm sure you don't want to sit here and watch me do this all day. Oh, and I forgot to mention, if you don't know, in order to switch to the pencil tool, you just hold your mouse button down over um, where the brush tool typically is and switch to pencil. And for the eraser, the pencil mode is up in this menu right here for Photoshop. Okay, so this is what I have. And then I'm gonna make another one of these, but uh, slightly different. So I'm gonna turn down the opacity and then make a new layer so I can over top, so I can sort of see what I'm doing. Um, let's see. I don't know, how would this look if I did that actually? It's okay, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just kind of experimenting with this and uh, you can too. It might not always turn out perfectly the first time or exactly how you want it, but um, sort of my strategy with this, I'm kind of uh, making it so that there is some kind of sparkle variation, but there are also some sparkles that sort of grow and shrink. Because that's another thing that's sort of a common Thing that you see in these uh, sparkle graphics. 
Okay, so here's what I have. I, you might want to spend a bit more time on this than I did. I'm going to put the opacity of this one back up. Um, kind of put more sparkles in this one maybe, but oh well. <laughs> um, again, like I said, okay, so I'm going to make um, the background transparent again. Um, and then I'm going to save these both as patterns. So, right, edit, define pattern just like we did before. And then I'm just going to name them one and two. Okay. Oops. All right. And then just to give you a final example, um, so, sort of, <laughs> sorry, I'm just trying to sort of go over a bunch of different ways you can sort of create these sparkle effects and use patterns. Um, so we'll take this MSP Poogle plushie and let's just say I wanted to uh, so let, uh, make him sparkle in all the darker yellow patches. So I'll just uh, select all of those and maybe I'll do his eyes as well. Oops. Uh, I, maybe I should have <laughs> picked something with a darker color, but this was the first thing that came to mind for me. So <laughs> there you go. Um, oh my goodness. I'm so sorry if you can hear my fan, my laptop fan. It's really loud right now and there's not really much I can do about it. I apologize. There's his evil little eyes and all his uh, darker yellow bits. So I'm going to make... Um, again make a fill layer um and when and it's just gonna go in the selection so uh ba -ba -ba, layer new fill layer pattern and then we are going to choose uh our first sparkle which is this one <laughs> and that's what it looks like and you can sort of adjust this move it around if you want but, um, or if you click snap to origin, it'll go back to, um, sort of the original position it was in, which could be helpful as I'm about to show you in a minute. I'm going to reselect, select, reselect, or, um, and then I'm going to add, uh, the new layer or the no pattern layer and then do the second sparkle thing we made okay and you can see it's a bit different so if you want you can try to line it up um if what you were going for was the whole um sparkle um like uniform sparkle thing um or if not, that's okay, but um, if we go snap to origin and then, um, sorry, yeah, double click on the little uh, pattern icon in the layer and then snap to origin again, that'll line them up. So now we're going to just do the exact same thing with the uh, animation window. Okay, we'll have one of them visible and then do the next frame, hide that to make the other one visible, and then just have it switch between the two. And that's about it. <laughs> that's how it looks. And if you want to with this technique, you can even just do um, you could do a noise a filter and then have that as sort of the background for your glitter and then just have the glitter animated on top if you want. Uh, that's how that looks and I think that's about all I want to show you. There's all things kind of things you can have do with glitter and I just hope uh, you have fun with it and enjoy it and I hope <laughs> this helped in some small way. 
Oh, there we go. I'm sorry. That was a very disorganized explanation. I had it all planned out in my head, but of course, um, in execution, it uh, turned out very differently. Oh my goodness. I did such a lazy job on <laughs> this crowd. I'm sorry. I remember thinking, I don't know what it should look like. I don't really have a solid idea in my mind. I kind of looked at the crown, like the item you can get from the game. I didn't know I wasn't really feeling it, so I just kind of did uh, a bunch of shapes and put them together and uh, thought, uh, that, that'll work. <laughs> it's enough, I think. Uh, but yeah, I just had so much fun making this. I'm really happy. I hope other people enjoy it too. I, I, it, you know, it really just brought me so much joy to be able to do something, um, that's just really kind of gaudy <laughs> and, and glittery and colorful. I love, um, creating, uh, like these glitter graphics. Um, it's, it's super fun for me. <laughs> um, and I kind of want to make more. I have a bunch of idea for Neopets adoptables that I want to make. Oh yeah, and I also wanted to apologize for, um, the fact that it's been so long since I've made a video. Um, I was really nervous about this one. Um, I felt just a lot of pressure. <gasps> oh my goodness, the lens flare! <laughs> I'm sorry! I feel like the lens flare was such a staple of 2000s art. I was like the excitement of discovering that you had that technology at your fingertips and then putting it in all your art and graphics. <laughs> um, it was truly amazing and now they're maybe a bit tacky but I was just overjoyed to have the opportunity to be able to use one again. I had to put it in here somehow. Um, uh, this is pretty much the end. That's about it from me. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. Um, I'll do a little tutorial on how to export a GIF. If you don't already know, it's pretty simple, but other than that, I think we're done. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Alright, so finally, once you have all your animation how you want it, you can just go to File, and then Save for Web, or Save for Web and Devices. It might say something slightly different depending on which version of Photoshop you have. Again, I'm working in CS4, I used to work in CS2, but it stopped uh, working properly on Windows 11, so I have to switch to a slightly <laughs> more recent version. But anyways, we're going to select GIF from this drop-down menu if it isn't already um, selected. And then um, in terms of the, uh, the sort of the colors, you're limited to a maximum of 256 colors. So um, you're going to have to find a way <laughs> to get them to blend properly. So that's where this menu comes in. And you can sort of look at the different options and see what looks best to you, honestly. Um, for me, I kind of like pattern. I think that looks fairly nice and clean. If, oops, if we zoom in, you can kind of see more how each individual setting works. Um, and then you can also, oops, it's a very close up. We can zoom back out to 100. And so this is the size it's going to be um, on the web at 100% here. But anyways, so you can see the different frames here. So if you play it back and it looks good to you, you can just hit save and save it as uh, whatever you want. So that is is about it for this video. Thank you so so much for watching and for everything. I really appreciate it. I know I'm I I try my best. <laughs> so I I hope this was at least enjoyable or helped you and I will see you soon with a new video. Thank you so much and bye.